All right, everybody, welcome back to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown. All three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Jack White, The Singing Sword by Jack White. This is book number three in his... Um, Gosh, I don't even know what this is called. The Chronicles of King Arthur. Um, it's just a 10-book series I've got right here. Chronicling the Life of King Arthur. Well, it starts with, and we'll just go over this right now before we... The first three books are set way before King Arthur, where they deal with some characters um, <clears throat> like the grandfathers of King Arthur. Then the next three books are uh, dealing with Merlin and Uther, Pendragon as they come to power. And then the final four books out of the ten actually are about King Arthur. It's one of the best King Arthur retellings of all time. And these books are just a delight. I love them. Anyway, let's talk about The Singing Sword, book number three. Now, if you want to watch my review of book number one, The Burning Stone, go ahead and uh, just type in The Burning Stone, my last name, and the book review will uh, show right up there. Same with the Sky Stone, which is book number two. And now this is book number three, The Singing Sword. Um, so, takes place in the year 387 to... Well, let's talk about the covers first. We're getting ahead of ourselves. You know I love graphic design and cover illustration. And now I have each one of these books in hardcover. I also have each one of these books in mass market paperback. I also have the audible.com version of every one of these books, too. That's how much I love these books. But let's talk about the hardcover version and the paperback version. I actually like both of them about equally. I, I first, you know, you can't really see it here, but because my uh, my plastic cover that's over this is kind of glaring, but this has got a really cool gold, you know, shiny uh, chrome gold cover. It's just really dynamite, and um. A nice picture of some castle in the background that's and, and but this one has a, a nice cover um uh and, and i let's see who the cover artist is um edward miller i like the this cover a lot too it's like a nice version of stonehenge wraps around it's pretty cool because these books do take place in southern england in and around stonehenge sort of bath um that sort of area cornwall glastonbury um those kind of places anyway um takes place in, uh, we'll put this one up right there so you can see it. Okay, so it takes place in the year 387 to 401, which is a long time ago, 1700 years ago. Um, it takes place in England. Um, we'll get a gripping opening scene where we find some mysterious dead bodies in Bath. Well, it's called Aquia Sullis at the time. Remember, England back then was sort of a Roman, part of the Roman Empire. So everything had like these Roman names, like Bath was called Aquia Solis. And we get a list of, he's, Jack White does a great job of giving us <clears throat> maps and lists of different names in Roman and what town, you know, the Roman name of the town and what town it actually was. Um, and then the maps are cool too. And we get a little, a lot of historical notes at the back also, if you want to read those. But these books are great at just describing the brutality of the early Middle Ages. The lawlessness, the grimness, how the jealousies and murders, then the rampaging, shocking. Just nobody, I mean, it was just like, you did not want to live then. You did not, you do not want to live then. It sucked. And how rare it was just for children, babies, to even survive. You know, a woman would have 12, you know, she'd have 12 conceptions and maybe only one or two of those would be born and maybe only one of them would survive to adulthood it was just awful whether it was they were dying of accident or uh, disease or just everything everything i mean year in and year out just to survive bleak heartbreaking backbreaking lives i mean how do you and then how do you make laws in this place because uh the romans uh settled the england and then they kind of slowly backed out and but some people stayed and they left they left it just kind of a outlaws were running the thing. And how, and if you were a good man, how did you 
how did you create a society? How did you, uh, how did you uh, decide what laws to enforce and things like that? And, and so it was kind of, this is the backdrop of these books. And the reason I love this series so much is because Jack White takes the King Arthur story and as if it really had happened, like there's no magic, there's no, and if they're, and if the characters think that something is magical, Jack White does a real great job of explaining sort of a natural phenomena that might have happened. And he does this really good in the first couple of books where we, where we see the asteroids falling from the sky and they landing in the lakes and, uh, they pull these rocks out of the lakes and they sculpt, make sculptures out of them. And one of the sculptures they make is, um, this, uh, fertility goddess sculpture that they call the lady of the lake because they dug the uh, asteroid out of the lake and uh, they made a sculpture and they call her the lady of the lake. And then in this book, which is cool, we, um, uh, our main character is Varus and he, um, is a blacksmith, uh, He's old. He's about 48 years old in this book. He was a younger man in, in book two, but now he's an older man trying to get this community in Southern England going. And he's got this, this sculpture of the, called the Lady of the Lake that he's created out of this asteroid. And now he wants to create the world's greatest weapon out of the sculpture called the Lady of the Lake. Now you can see where I'm going with how these myths sort of how Jack White does a really good job of explaining these myths like the Lady of the Lake, the sword Excalibur, how the Lady of the Lake handed Excalibur. I mean, he, he's explaining step by step how these things may have happened just due to natural phenomenon and people's ingenuity. And he does that for every one of the King Arthur myths throughout the whole series. He, he The sword and the stone... All of it, he does just such a great job of explaining. And Merlin's, even in later volumes when we get to Merlin's magic, and how Merlin is just, yeah, he's a magician, but he's no different than our, like our, our, our David Copperfield. It's just all sleight of hand, you know, but people are like, oh my God, he's got magical powers. Jack White does such a great job of this, of explaining the entire mythology from the beginnings, from King Arthur's grandparents to his parents to him, and how all of the myths came up. And uh, <clears throat> I will just read the back because it does a good job of explaining kind of what's happening. So the legions have departed. The Roman legions have departed England. The last vestiges of the Roman authority are gone. And a thriving colony that has lasted for more than 400 years is poised on the brink of destruction. Publius Verus and Caius Britannicus are two Romans who choose to stay choose to fight for their adopted land, they will build a hilltop fort that will withstand the onslaught of the barbarians who seek to plunder Britain's wealth. Out of their struggles, a new Britain and a new people will emerge. Britons who are carefully crafted, Britons who are a carefully crafted alloy, a temporal fusion of Roman and Celtic greatness. A carefully Crafted alloy. This is a, they're, they're just in the jacket. They are alluding to the fact that these people are, are metal workers, and they might make a weapon that is grand. And one more thing: these two men are great grandfather are grandfathers to the man known as Arthur, King of the Britons, and their actions will help shape a nation and forge the sword known as Excalibur. This is probably the third time I've read this book. I've read this series, I think, all the way through twice. And so I'm now I'm rereading all of them for the third time. Just absolutely dynamite. The writing is so descriptive. You are immersed. I mean, it is so vivid and descriptive, I can't even describe it. Now, my favorite King Arthur books are the Bernard Cornwall Sax Saxon Tales. But literally, literally, so close on their heels is this jack white series so close i mean they're almost nip and tuck tied for the top spot in my opinion but i give this i give this the singing sword um 10 out of 10 i mean this is a great great adventure novel lots of battles lots of grim scenes lots of i mean if you enjoy books that show you the reality of the middle ages you're going to enjoy this and if you also like an adventure story and mythology title and some historical stuff tied into it 
It's just great for you. Um, anyway, 10 out of 10.